welcome to another tutorial with me. My name is Crafty Jojo and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator and tonight I'm going to show you how I created this box. And this box um, features the brand new uh, Foil Frenzy designer paper series stack um, that you can actually um, currently buy from Stampin' Up! and the link to my web shop actually is in the description box of this tutorial so if you're interested in having a look uh, you can browse the whole selection in my web store. Um, the box has a lid that comes off just like so and when you open it it reveals four drawers and each drawer has a tiny little box in it and I'm going to show you how I made these and I quite like it because this is not a new invention many people have made this before but um, this is just my approach to it and I hope you like it and tonight I'm not going to do the same color scheme I'm going to actually use pink and like berry burst to be correct, berry burst and uh, lime twist, lemon lime twist. So um, let me find a place where to put this and this is what you will need. Um, I'm going to use this designer paper from the Foil Frenzy and I just love it. It's so sparkly and this is actually going to be the piece of cardstock you need for the body of your box and it measures six and a quarter inch by 12 inches and uh, you need one of those and then for your little drawers you need four pieces of cardstock and um, the drawers measure eight seven eighths of an inch squared and you need to score these at one and a half and three inches on all four sides what i'm going to show you so this is for the drawers you need four of it and it is eight seven eighths by eight seven eighths then um, for the little boxes that fit inside your drawer you need four bits of um, cardstock and the insert for the boxes is nine and a quarter by five and a quarter and you need four of these and the scoring is a bit more complicated on this one so I'm going to tell you while we're working through it. You need to um, die cut and I actually used this set it's not a stamping up set I used um, these dies to create the panels and you would need to create one larger one um, and a pink one and a green one on top and that's going to go on top of your lid so that's basically this one here just in pink and on top of all the little boxes you are going to need to cut four of these and four of these because you're going to do four boxes and they're going to be layered with dimensionals I've already prepped this so this is what you need four times each then you would need um, for the bottom of your drawers you would need to cut four bits of um, your cardstock that you have used for the outside and uh, this measures two three quarters by two three quarters so squared you need four of those and then you need your designer paper for the inside of your box and you need four strips and these need to be cut to six inches by two three quarters so two three quarters by six and you need four of those for the inside of your box um, then you need to cut two strips from your berry burst cardstock that measures um, one inch um, because we need to create the belly band from this the belly band that goes around the lid so that's it so we need this and this is going to be your lid and uh, your lid measures 11 1 8 of an inch by 11 1 8 of an inch and you need to score at two inches and four inches on all four sides to create your lid so that's this and then you would need to die cut your flower which is from the succulent also oh succulent oops set I've put this, uh, this, the stamp set is called also succulent and I think it's uh, the botanical gardens and these are the dies and I've cut all six sizes so you have the large one, medium and small one and then these so all together it's six bits that uh, go to make this flower. So um, I'm quickly going to take these out and this I love this brush because it just makes it easy to take there you go anything out it's lovely it's a must-have sometimes it's so fiddly especially on the smaller bits to get it out and before we are going to um, 
score and do all that maybe i'm quickly going to um oops quickly going to show you how i because here this was the tranquil tide and i used the berry burst to just ink the edges of my flower so this is berry burst now and um i don't know yet which color i'm going to use to stick with the color scheme i would need to use the um, lemon lime twist but i'm not sure if that's a good idea so maybe i'm still I'm, I'm undecided about that yet let me just put this away quickly so that this nothing gets lost because i'm a bit untidy actually and i keep losing my dies if i don't put them back straight away so this is how i do it i just put magnet a sheet of magnetic foil in here and so i have it all together in one packet all right so this is our flower which is going to be layered like so later on and now let's go and i think i'm going to start with the scoring so i'm going to get my scoreboard out first of all we're going to do the lid can you see what i'm doing yes and i said the lid is going to be scored at two inch and at four inch on all four sides so that's it's designer paper so don't press too hard just be gentle and you do two and four inches this. two and four and i'm still undecided which side i'm actually going to um, use because this is going to be my box the outside of my box and this is going to be the lid that will come down. Am I going to use this side or this side? I think this looks better, doesn't it? I'm going to leave this. This is my going to, going to be my outside. All right. So um, once you've done this, we need to cut. And to cut the lid, oh, this is, can you see it? It's very, actually, it's easier. Uh, no, it's not. It's worse. Um, it might be difficult for you to see, but basically what I'm doing is I'm just creating my flaps by cutting in as straight as possible which is slightly tricky because it's such a big piece of paper and it's not as rigid as cardstock would be so what you're going to do is first of all you cut up to the second score line then you turn it upside down and you do exactly the same on the opposite need to hold this need to move it to see the lines the score lines it's very difficult so excuse me if you can't see it very well but you are cutting basically on the two and the four inch score line up to the second score line all right so once you've done this what you're going to do is you are going to slightly wedge this you're going to cut slightly below your score line here then you're going to wedge this bit and you're going to wedge this side and you carry on wedging here but only to the first score line and then i turn it and i'm going to cut this off slightly wedged oops i'm going to take this off below the score line and then i'm going to wedge it it doesn't matter if it's slightly uneven like i just cut it here because that's the flap that's going to be glued inside anyway but for those with OCD, let me just try to make it straight. All right. <laughs> Still not good enough for somebody with OCD, but never mind. I don't suffer from it, so I'm not bothered. So here we go. You slowly can see how this is taking its shape. I think that's Alfie. Can you hear Alfie crying? Alfie is one of our cats that has a very bad eye infection and currently he's not allowed out because we have to give him his medication every day and he's a bit of a stray once he's outside he won't be seen again for a while so 
He's not allowed out and he's complaining. He wants to go out now. He's like, come on woman, let me out. Oh, I can't let him out. His eye is really bad. For those of you who have got me on Facebook as a friend, they can see the pictures of Alfie on my profile. He really looks nasty. So, okay, let me just clean up my workspace here. This is just bin. And all this is in the way as well. So this is, can you see it, what you should have. So the next thing you do is, of course, you burnish and fold all your score lines. And then you put your lid together. And because it's DSP, I decided to um, actually double the sides to make it more sturdy and added the belly band around it on top to make it more sturdy so this is what we've got at this point so you would bring your lid together like so and like so this is how it goes together okay and then once this is glued in you're going to fold this in and where's my glue here it is so here we go Come on, not coming. I started this bottle yesterday and it's empty already again. That's ridiculous. The amount of glue that I use. Come on, boot, boot, boot. I need a new bottle, I'm afraid. Is this ever going to come out? No, Alfie, you can't go out. No, no. Crying. Dear me, there we go. Okay, so I'm carefully try to be really precise when putting your corners together because you want a neat look of your lid. So take your time gluing this together. Try to be spot on. You do the same at the opposite. All right. Double check. And if I'm happy with my sides, I'm just going to apply generously a bit of wet glue here. And then I'll just fold it inwards and I use a bone folder, not my best one, because in case I ooze some of the glue out, I don't want my bone folder, my good bone folder to be smudged with glue. So this is a cheap one, which was in one of those craft magazines where I don't care, but my nice one from Stampin' Up, I'm not going to smudge with glue. So you keep rubbing until it all has set nicely and this is what your lid should look like at this point and then this piece comes in so as I said before you need to um, do three of these and layer them with um, dimensionals which I've already done to save some time and if only I could find my tweezers gone where are they Hmm. Oh, there they are. All right. What you do is, because we still need to feed some um, ribbon through. A, oh no, some ribbon through. So you only layer the first two parts, the smallest and this one. You layer, and I like this shape because it's easy to layer very centered because of these little things they're pointing in the right direction so once you've done this you just take your one eighth of an inch handheld punch and you try to figure out where the center is roughly here and that's absolutely fine if you made a hole there and then I'm going to take my 
little bit of this is one of the dispensers there's tutorial if you're interested in making these there's a tutorial on my channel a free tutorial on how to make ribbon dispensers in any size um, so if you're interested just go and find it it's one of it's maybe like 20 or 30 tutorials down if you scroll through my channel you will find it okay so next thing to do is fiddle this oh, fiddle this through the gap here we go so take it from the top through your dimensional and just pop it down I could actually add a bit of double-sided sticky tape which I'm going to do so I'll just take a tiny wee bit of double-sided sticky tape pop this down here Can you see what I'm doing I peel it off and I just press my bit down there to do this here as well wait a minute well that sticks really well so here we go pop this down there all right once we've done this we're going to pop this on the larger one and I try to be as precise as possible, aiming for the center, like so. And then you just peel all these dimensionals off and pop it on your lid. And that's the lid that can be set aside and then we're going to work on the body of the box all right so again we want to aim i think this looks awesome i love it already very nice so i'm going to set this aside and we're going to work on the body for the body we need this piece of cardstock as you remember and that was the six and a quarter by 12 inches and i'm going to score this from the back side because i don't want to break the foil and you score it three six and nine inches so you score it three at six and at nine inches going to burnish and fold and I'm not going to use the bone folder because I don't want to rub off wait a minute I don't want to rub off my foil so I'm only using my finger I don't know actually if it would come off but I just don't want to take any chances so this is what you've got and um, at this point I'm gluing in my DSP and now the question is because I actually inked up the edges of my DSP from inside here I'm not sure if I'm going to do the same here look see I inked this up before putting my DSP in or I'm not sure if I want to do it because I would need to do it in berry burst and I don't know if that will look nice hmm decisions decisions uh, because you know if I I can't do it later if I once my DSP is glued in it's glued in but I think I'm not going to do it I don't like it on this because I don't think that the pink ink will look nice on the brown background so um, I just leave out leave it out I'm not doing it so apparently uh, again just quickly glue in your DSP And 
and we are ready for the next step. Alfie, no, you can't go out. Oh, my cat is desperate. I don't know if I should show you Alfie. Maybe he wants to be a TV star, I don't know. But he's, he's looking horrible, his eyes really bruised and bad. He got involved in a fight and the other cat actually slit the inner eye, the inner corner of his eye, slit it open. So the lower lid got really inflamed and once the infection has healed, he needs to be stitched up there anyway. So he doesn't know yet that he's going to have a small op on his eye in two weeks time when the infection is gone. So this is what we've got. And um, before we can carry on now, we would need to create our little drawers. And uh, so we set this aside. You could fit, try and see if the lid fits. It should fit actually easily. So this is what it's going to look like. And I just love it. Um, okay. So for our drawers, you need the piece of cardstock, four of them, apparently. But I'm only doing one because I've prepped three already. And the drawers are 878 8 by 8, 7, 8 and we score it one and a half and three so very easy scoring scoreboard out and we score one and a half and three on all four sides and one and a half and three one and a half and three and at one and a half and three so that's the scoring done for this you would do this four times and then before you actually are going to cut anything you turn it inside out like the other way around so you've scored on this side and you're going to glue this to the center of your score lines because this is going to be the bottom of your box and it's much easier to put the bit in now and put it down centered rather than when the box is assembled so here we go and now we are going to cut just like before we are going to cut on our two score lines uh, all the way up to the second score line creating the flaps that will close the box so that is no big deal and we do this on both sides like so and then we turn it upside down so to the opposite side and do exactly the same so you turn 180 degrees not just 90 you turn it 180 degrees so that you are cutting on the opposing side not the neighboring side okay and now i just turn it 90 degrees and i start i'm going to cut below my Score line here. I wedge all these. I'm going to wedge this, but only to the first score line. I'm taking this out, cutting my flap below the score line to make it shorter. And again, taking this out. finished cutting this is what your piece should look like basically just exactly the same like your lid it's the same so I'm going to quickly let you have a look at it so after you've cut uh, your drawer this is what you get and inside oops inside you should have this so now you're folding it on all your score lines
right and this is ready to assemble like so okay and we're going to assemble it and then fold this inwards so this is all we're doing to get this done so you do this four times because you apparently have to do four whilst i'm only doing one because i've already done the other three and then again be very precise when putting the corners together because you really want a nice square box otherwise you will have issues with fitting them into your cardstock later on when you want to assemble the box you get a problem if that is not very tidy so here we go and again try to line it up nicely like so Carefully give it a rub. If you rub it too hard, it's going to move. So before you go ahead, double check if your corners have moved. And now I'm just going to add glue here. And fold it inwards. And rub it. And fold it inwards. And rub it. So this is what you've got at this point. And this is your drawer finished and you should at this point then have something like this with a very nice fitted, nicely fitted um, bottom. And you should, when you've done all four, you should have four of these and you are going to glue these into your card like so it doesn't matter there's no up or down because it's um there's no marking on it it just doesn't matter and you start with the first one which goes exactly to this side here so i'm going to add some glue here and then i'm going to make sure that it's exactly can you see it this is how you can you see it this is how you try to glue your box in so there's a small gap here there's no gap here no gap here okay so this is your first box and oh, give it a good rub it really needs to stick well and your second box is going to sit above this one you can't leave a gap because the, uh, this is just enough space for the other two boxes so you have to be really precise and that's why I said you have to glue your box together and try to make it as squared as possible when gluing it together so again I'm using this as my guide popping this in And again it sits here and there's a small gap there and you give it a good rub that's your second box and your third box is going in here so it's going to be glued on there oops that was a bit too much glue there trying to do it in a way that you can see what I'm doing here okay trying to align it it's not so easy I know what I'm doing but trying to demo it is not so easy okay when you're happy with your alignment give it a good rub and as you can see there's only just space left for the last box 
and this is this one here and it will go on here so we need some glue on one side of our box Pop it in like so. Okay. Okay, maybe it's more about there, which is all right. Never mind. I can come down a tiny wee bit, but that's about it. So um, this is what you have got at this point, so it folds up like so, your lid should fit on it now and what's left to do is now um, create the little boxes that go inside. So this is this piece of cardstock that you will need and uh, it's nine and a quarter by five and a quarter and we are going to score this and this is going to be uh, slightly more complicated. So we're going to start scoring on the short side and we score at one and a quarter and at four. And on the long side, you're going to score at one and a quarter at four at five and a quarter and at eight. And now you're going to turn it back to the short side. And here you are going to um, score at half an inch only down to the second score line all right half an inch down to here and um, here we are going to score at four three quarters down to there and then you're going to turn it like so again and you are going to score at um, eight three quarters and you score there so this is the scoring for your little box this is what you've got and what you're going to do is when you cut it is you first of all create your flaps here and you're going to wedge them and at this end as well going to wedge it And we do the opposing side. We wedge it and we wedge it. <clears throat> so this is what you've got so far, and now it's getting funny because actually we have to take this bit off so I think actually instead of making it nine nine and a quarter it would need to be like eight how, how long is it really where's my ruler eight three quarters then you could have saved the last score line but you still need to cut this off here So you can wedge it somewhat slightly when you take out the corner. I'm going to take this side off here as well. Try to cut it straight. This is not very nicely cut. Mm -mm 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 -mm. I'm going to do this properly. Okay. And we wedge it here. And now you have to round this corner by hand. And actually I'm going to, because I cut it on the score line. So, going to, and here I'm also going to cut off my score line first. I don't like the score line. All right, and we're going to round it by hand. So at this point, 
this is what you've got for your small little box and you're going to burnish and fold all your score lines And this is how your box comes together. All right, so this is what you need to glue together. And again, when putting the corners together, try to be very precise. Square your box up as well as you can so that it easily fits inside your drawers if it's a dodgy fit you haven't glued it properly so i try to be like really flush here same here and once I'm happy I'm going to try my lid on lid fits which is good fits so well I can open it again and then I'm just going to carefully use my bone folder try it again perfect fit and the last bit to do here is same as before you layer your little um, panels this one is cut from DSP so it's very thin that's why I've put so many um, dimensionals underneath and I'm going to line it up with my other panel like so. I'm going to get my punch out again. I'm going to aim for the center. Trying to, yeah, roughly. Okay, so this is what I've got, and then I would need to. Get a bit of my ribbon out, and then I feed it through the center. And you would need to assemble four of these boxes. I've already done three in preparation of this video tutorial, so I'm only showing you how I do this one. But apparently, you do it four times. If your paper comes off, that's no problem because you was going to pull it off. I'm happy with this length so I'm um, again going to get some of my double-sided tape out and I'm going to put it here and the second bit that I'm going to put here and I'm just going to turn this Number one, number two, taking these off, and then uh, where is my front? This is my front. I'm going to pop it on. And this is how my box is finished so at this point you should assemble four of these boxes and when you bring your tower in you can already fill in all the boxes in all the 
drawers just make sure they're all in the same direction so this is what it looks like I love it and it closes up like so and what's left to do is the belly band and the flower so for the belly band um, the 12 inch strip is slightly too short so what I do is I eyeball folding it around and actually I haven't eyeballed this very well because I wanted this to be in the center so never mind I will do it again with the other strip much better once I've done that I'm going to fold it properly making sure that it's nicely aligned not going to any side all right so this is what you've got at this point and you have a nice flush fitting here as you can see and I'm just going to cut a piece of from this piece here put it underneath to just cover the gap and glue it in so that's why it was no problem that this one was not folded very well but that's how it goes so I'm going to add some glue on here and I'm going to glue this in and then I'm doing exactly the same here and I try to give my belly band which sits around my lid so my lid band actually my however you want to call it give it a good rub I want a flush fitting but I still want to be able to adjust it in height so uh, I'm not gluing it to my lid I leave it movable freely movable okay so this is what we do and we can set this away to dry and I already love what this box is going to look like and the last bit to do is ink up these flowers and I haven't made up my mind yet I need to try it out on a piece of scrap actually let me just get a piece of scrap see what the lime green looks on like on it but I don't think it will look great oh can you imagine this I just <laughs> oh I'm gonna do this later hilarious bear with me all right, I quickly fixed the matter. And let me just, yeah, that's the lime green and it doesn't look great at all. So I actually have to stick to a darker color and I'm going to stick to um, probably Tranquil Tide. I think this will be good. Let's just see what it looks like on the pink. Yeah, I'm going to use the tranquil tide. So basically all I'm doing is I'm inking up my tool and I'm just gently dabbing the ink on like so. And that's the whole trick that gives this color to my flower. So number one, I did this on all six bits, so I'm quickly doing this on camera, it's not taking too long. You can get experimental if you um, actually take other colors like for example if I had made the flower in the lime green color used lime green cardstock for it I would have tried to uh, ink it up in pink and see what it looks like with the berry burst but now I've die cut it in pink in berry burst actually so I'm going to stick to this color scheme doesn't matter if it's slightly dark that's a nice twist to it anyway 
So here we go, and the last tiny wee bit. Okay, so once this is done, I am using my bone folder to curl this. Do this with all six bits. Be careful that you don't pull too hard because then it uh, just rips off there. I've done that before because I was doing it quick and I pulled a bit too hard because I wanted it a nice curl and then I just broke my flower. Wasn't impressed with that performance but I hope this is not happening on live camera here. Well, anyway, you know that now and then something goes wrong when I craft as well, so never mind. Nobody's perfect. And actually, this one, um, I use the tool set. Which was this one here. This is just a foam pad. And... I'm just using a ball tool to curl these up like so okay that was it no more tools needed and then I'm just going to layer it and To layer it I make sure that I close the gaps as you can see so this lead this petal here this bit covers this gap this gap this gap just to make sure that it's a closed flower because it doesn't look very nice if the background shines through then so also not so easy to get them all centered because it's a quite large flower and the smaller the bits get the more tricky it becomes anyway can you hear our sheep? meh they go outside it's our A team the five we hand reared they complain they want to come indoors but they are too big now to come indoors when they were really small and abandoned by their mums, they used to live in our kitchen and we hand reared them there, what for feeding them. Now they are so tame that they think they are human beings. And they want to come indoors all the time, want to come for cuddles. Dead canny, they are. They are so a sheep. They are from the Hebrides, so they look like goats, but they are actually sheep. But they're more like goats from their appearance. So this is my flower. I absolutely love how this flower has come out. What do you think? I'm just going to pop a diamond in it, in the center. Oops, just lost my diamond. So there you go. Pop my diamond. Use my tweezers to pop these up, like so. And then all that's left to do is glue your flower to the center of your box. And I think I like it so I can turn it a bit. Pop this up, pop this up. You can still move it around as long as your wet glue is still wet. But I think I like it like this. So this is my box finished. And as you can see, this version looks very different from this. But uh, it's really worth buying a stack of this um, foil frenzy 
designer paper. It's lovely. There are so many different colors and designs in it and I'm absolutely in love with it. I love it. It looks so sophisticated. So this is my box. Let me have a look. If I open it, ta-da! I have my cute little boxes in here. Come on. That's what the box looks like opens up like so perfect for some jewelry some treats some money buttons <laughs> whatever and they have a very flush fitting really flush i love it and it looks ever so cute doesn't it so i hope you like my little tutorial and you are having so much fun making your own version of this um i would love to see your makes why don't you join my um facebook group the link to it is in the description box of this um, video so you can um, just join my facebook group and post your makes there i would love to see them and get some feedback there and um all the other links in my description box lead you to my blog please don't forget to subscribe the button is there in the right corner and thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial. Love this box as much as I do. And um, thanks for watching and have a nice evening. Bye.